Hey Overtime Garagers, welcome back to another episode and this time we're going to talk about mini tubs going in a 55 Chevy car. This is a 210, so any Tri-5 they're all very similar. You can see I've done a little bit of pre-work, I yanked the trunk and I pulled the back seat out of there and then I stuck this in there just to kind of get an idea of how it's gonna fit and obviously there are some things in the way there's a rear seat support and then there's the trunk support attached to that and you can see I've trimmed away already to get uh, those wheels I got 20 by 10s on here with a remember the tire size oh there it is 285 35 20 so I've got them fitting if I need to finish the job by welding in the, the tubs and uh, with the minimal amount of trimming I have done, there is still, uh, once in a while, in a real extreme case, some rubbing. So you can see that on the tire. We're going to get a little more clearance. So, follow along. Okay, so to relieve the tension on these trunk lid springs, which are these bars going across, I'm going to just uh, put a 3 8 or a 10 millimeter socket on here and then pull that free. There you go. So I'm disconnecting the uh, those are totally loose now. I'll be cutting this bracket off there so I don't want any tension on it. Okay, here's what we're starting with. Told you I cut some of that out already, but you can see I pulled the side panel so that my grinding and welding wouldn't ruin that. And then, uh, see the seat brace seat back. Let's cut into that. Pretty much have to go all the way to the flat spot on the top of that um, current inner wheel well. So, and then I'm going to use the frame as a guide which you can't see from here. But it's like right about right about here the chassis frame runs along there, so can't go past that. That's a good guide. Sorry for the glare. Alright, we're part way through the cutout. See, I've cut about, you know, as a rough cut along the top flat of the current fender well. And then I cut into the floor. Let's look at it from here. I left an inch to two inches along this floor and what I intend to do is fold this down and then weld the maybe plug weld from the fender or the tub to that floor along the bottom. So I'll show you how that goes. And there's still some fine tuning do so. 
Hey, welcome back. I'm giving you a mid tub, mid mini tub uh, update here. So you can see it's fitting pretty well so far. This is um, a bigger cut than what I had made previously. There's kind of what it looked like sort of when I started. So made uh, more clearance because I've got more sheet metal here with this new mini tub. Looks like that bracket for the trunk hinge is gonna land in a great spot there. And uh, here it looks like inside. Oh, hard to hold this thing, there we go. It's fitting up really well and the uh, flange that I made off the trunk floor looks like it's working pretty well. I'll be able to spot weld to that or just seam weld it however looks best. And then let's look inside from where the back seat is. And there it is from inside. See, it's uh, fitting really well. So I'll make a, a cut and uh, do a butt weld on that uh, along the top of the mini tub. So, yeah. So far, so good. Okay, let me catch you up. You can see uh, the tub is tacked in place, at least on the uh, rear there. And uh, I got it fit as best as I could. And then there's a little bit of a gap, so I'll have to bridge that with the welding. You can see uh, how the this bracket is going to still meet up with the new tub even though I trimmed off probably three quarters of an inch or so across there it was as long as that one so I trimmed it up to where those beads start see that and then I bent it over just a little bit so it would allow clearance for the tub and then uh, I bent the floor back cut the floor back so it would line up as well as it could and then, uh, kind of uh, held it in place and got started tacking it you can see the gray primer I put on it it's actually a weld through primer for the areas where I would have bare metal, but wouldn't be able to get paint down in between on those lapped joints there. So that's what the gray primer is about. It's just a weld through primer. And then I got some seam sealer so that I could uh, run that along all the seams and protect them from corrosion. So. Okay, back on our 55 here, getting started with the wheel tubbing project. Again, this is the driver's side that is not quite finished, but roughed in at least. And I want to get this trimmed out and then the new wheel tub that's wider welded in there. So first, first things first, took off this uh, spare tire bracket. It had a couple of spot welds. 
then I trimmed across the trunk bracket kind of like I did on the last on the other side and then I wanted to cut this uh, original wheel well kind of just at the edge of the flat before it starts curving so much because it's going to have to come out inboard uh, a couple more inches so the flat seems like a good spot to split it <clears throat> so here it is from the inside I just made a mark that runs along the outer or sorry inboard side of the flat spot so I'll use that as a guide and we'll cut into it with a four inch angle grinder this guy and then uh, use the sawzall because it seems to make a smoother easier cut a lot less mess and <clears throat> and it's quieter and so I was happy with how the sawzall worked on the other side so I'm trying to learn something and do this side as well or better I'm happy with how the other side turned out. I'll show you another look at it without any light. Okay, here's kind of in the middle of it. Got that line trimmed. And then, uh, Couple spot wells drilled out over here. Like that coming out. Not the straightest cuts I've ever made, that's for sure. So then, uh, Trimmed up around that seat bracket, seat back, and then cut through it a little bit on the top side. And cut along here already up to this point, and then there was no spot welds between here and there, so that came out. Pretty easily. A few spot welds in that part. It had been trimmed up to here to get the wheels fitting in the first place. But there you have it. Okay, now let me show you. The next step here after I trimmed this out was to then trim the floor so I could fold it back and what I'm trying to do is get it as close to the frame as possible but at the ends it curves on both the front and the rear so what I did here is I made a cut um, across the car but not too deep then I can bend that flange down this way at the back side of that and then I can bend this flange down to kind of match the curve. These will be easier because they're just horizontal or sorry parallel with the frame and then, so at every crease or bend in the floor I made a cut so that I could bend that flange down. In this case, bend it afterward and down and afterward and then at this angle. So that's the goal. So now I'll go form it and fit it up here and see if I can get it to form as well as the other side did. When I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> okay, we're getting prepped for installing this. Now we've got it uh, sanded for welding. Kind of what it looks like.
looks like just all around the edges I'll show you what it looks like after it's in there but here is the pre-fit up I'm going really fast because I don't want you to critique it too bad but there it is so you can see how the folded sheet metal is on the floor um, after I've cut it back and formed it down at an angle and got a good angle there to match the inner fender tub and the same up here so here warm that out as well so I'll get it fit up in there and you can look at it closer and I would say I guess this is this kind of work is directly proportional to your amount of patience you have to get it pristine and perfect but kind of limited by access and everything too so I wanted to give you a look at it before we tack that in there. Okay, now here it is uh, positioned. And there's some glare, so it'll be tough to see, but the seam is pretty good, especially at the aft side. And then about the top middle, it's overlapping, which I'm fine with. I'm going to weld it from the inside all the way around, so it's a good seal from the inside of the wheel well and then I'll tack it and kind of form it where I need to but and then along the bottom you can see maybe clean that up a little after welding but it's gonna basically tack along the bottom and I'm planning maybe to drill a couple of holes for spot weld type or rosette weld types come to that floor flange on the inside. And let me show you uh, from this side how it looks. So, pretty good fit with the floor, good seam, and then uh, of course that's all relative. I'm no pro, that's pretty clear and evident. So, that bracket, trunk brackets, laying there nicely in a good spot. And then I'm going to seam uh, seal all along that seal as well, just like is in the original car. But I'll redo that. Here's the other side again. <laughs> Okay, so uh, here we are about just starting the tacking in process. This is the inner tub. I've kind of cut it down. You can see I started on this end and it had a good fit. So I tacked that where it was good and then if I need to adjust it, I can and I can push this up a little tighter and get it just where I want it and keep tacking it all along that seam and in this spot I'm gonna make a little adjustment because it's sticking out a little bit I can hammer and tap that a little bit straighter and then tack that up some more so you can see the weld through primer that I put on wherever I ground away I wasn't sure what the black primer is on this Ideally, they would make that weld through, but for precautionary measures, especially in between the trunk sheet metal and the inner fender, that's a spot where I won't be able to get paint in and protect it. The uh, inner side here, I should be able to reach it all with primer and undercoating and stuff. So, but as a additional caution, and this stuff's working pretty well. It's a duplicolor 
weld through primer. But we'll see if it holds up to corrosion, I guess. But just wanted to show you kind of in the middle how that was going. Oh, now I'll show you from this side how it looks. So yeah, good, good fit mostly, and uh, we'll make it work even better. But here's the trunk bracket adjusted to match that inner fender. So. Go. Okay, back on the 55 wheel tubs. If you'll notice I've got, I made kind of a weird cut right there above the wheel well, right up in there. And so it'd be open right there to the back of the seat, which isn't a big deal. And this side, similar. I did a little better contouring it to the wheel well, but I didn't like the way that looked, even though the back of the seat's open to the trunk anyway, I still didn't like that. So let's walk around, I'll show you what I did. So from the inside, um, you can see how this fit pretty well along the bottom, but then had a weird cut above. And there's a sneak peek at what I did, but um, I made these really complex templates to fit some sheet metal in there. And I took some of the sheet metal from the wheel well that I had cut off. It's the uh, same thickness. And here's the next one. You can see how I custom fit them after I rough cut those. And then uh, tacked them into place. Filling up that hole and I feel better about that. And of course I'll seam seal uh, the floor to the wheel well all the way across. And then probably up along this seam here and this seam here so yeah anyway and on this side I made this template put a bend in it so it'd have a flange to weld to this surface and the seat back surface and tack that in place even though that was cut better we uh, wanted to fill that, at least make it uh, from the inside of the trunk looking in, it would be um, consistent both sides sealed up there. And like I said, obviously the back of the seat's open, but that doesn't look so weird from inside the trunk looking up by the wheel wells. And yeah, I'm no sheet metal or body expert. I don't have the luxury of working under a, a master body person, but I wanted to show you what things I had done and then you can build on them, make them better, or at least get some ideas going in the right direction. Yeah. There you go. spot I built a little piece and then I put a flange down so there was a big triangular gap there that I didn't have over here got better on the passenger side okay before I forget to show you the in process because I'm starting to put some paint down but here's the weld on the inside of the fender I cleaned it up 
the best that I wanted to for inside of here. I'm putting down some Pour 15 or paint over rust um, as the initial barrier. And then I'll put some uh, rubberized undercoating. Here's the other side that's just prepped but untouched with paint just yet. And I can't remember if I showed you these yet. There's the driver's side. And sorry, passenger, and then this is driver's side. And I cleaned out the old uh, seam sealer that was in on the back side of the trunk there. And up there was pretty clean where the fender goes because I cut it out, obviously. Cleaned up the trunk a little bit and I think I'll recoat the entire trunk with something, maybe a rubberized undercoating, maybe a truck bed coating, maybe a pour 15 only. I haven't decided yet, so I'll show you that as I get to it. Okay, we're uh, part way through this paint process. I've got the Pour 15 down in two coats on the wheel wells only. I was mainly aiming at the weld seams and where I had made the metal bare, but then I decided to do the whole uh, wheel tub on both sides and on the inside as well. So. That gets us probably the first barrier down. And the next thing we'll do is we'll put down this 3M rubberized undercoating on the inside of the fender wells underneath. Um, up here, I think I'll run a uh, can or a the top coat of this pour 15 which will be smooth so inside the trunk I'll keep it smooth I believe and underneath it'll be that textured rubberized coating so I'll show you how it turns out All right, here's a uh, seam sealing 101 by a beginner, that's me, using some Dynatron seam sealer. Uh, I scuffed the uh, area first because I had run pour 15 paint in that corner. So I did a light scuff and I laid this stuff down which is really tacky, stays in place, didn't want to come out so it was working fine. Then I used uh, some IPA to clean my hands using just my finger without a glove on was the best for smoothing that and then if you use a little IPA um, after it's in and smoothed you can do some additional smoothing with it. So see uh, it's not terribly great but then the next thing I'll do is uh, put some more paint over that seam <clears throat> more pour 15 over the seam and I'll do this center part of the trunk floor and here's the other side and that'll uh, should blend it all together nicely so uh, there you go there's the next step in this process, which has taken me way longer than I had planned. But that usually happens. 
and I'd never done this before so I had no real idea but um, now having done it it's quite a endeavor an undertaking to cut those fender uh, inner fenders out and replace them weld them up get it looking halfway decent so it's taking some time probably six or seven evenings at least and uh, I'm just working on it when I have time but it's coming together okay let me show you how the back of the seat is gonna look I kind of pulled this back now and you can see the shape how it's pretty tight to the uh, outer wall and uh, you can see I need to basically clear this by two inches so I made some marks at least two inches in I'll probably do a little more because there's a bend radius and uh, on this side I actually followed my marks and made the bends already so you can see that I took this which was straight and I bent it over and then bent these structural cross pieces downward and then this which was tight I kind of flattened it out so that's that's over there's the finished product and this is the start what I was starting with so see that straight straight piece here is I bend it over about two inches and then bend these down so um, I didn't want to have to cut it and re-weld, but that, that was on the table. Uh, but you can see this worked out pretty well. I just have some really big uh, channel locks. There's some regular size ones, so you see they're a really large pair. That gives me some leverage as I'm bending this. And having that angled head is good. I can get in there and bend that the way it needs to go. All right, let's check out the final modification. I got this uh, adjusted, got some more uh, air, uh, clearance, and then I have put the hog rings back in place where I pulled them from, and I just was able to reuse um, the ones that I had. I just bent them back with a couple pairs of pliers, needle nose and standard. And then these are hog ring pliers. And uh, it's pretty much a necessity. I don't know, you can probably do it without them, but it sure makes uh, putting this upholstery back in place a lot easier. There's the clearance there, and then if you look down on the upper part of the back seat, got more clearance there all the way down. And I did a check fit before I put the upholstery back where it went. And fortunately, I didn't have to cut any of the um, support wiring in this seat. That would have been a lot longer job and more painful. So by bending it and adjusting it and checking that, I was able to get it to work. And you probably won't be able to tell once everything's in place, no one will notice. So uh, it's, it's pretty uh, painless adjustment. But we'll throw it in there and then you take take a look. All right, hey, you want to check out the final product? Show you inside first. Let's 
seats are fitting nicely. Everything back together. And I think I've already shown you inside here. And that's the dark view, so hopefully you can sort of tell, but I'm happy with the results. There you go, there's a little how to tub the old uh, Tri-5. And I'll show you the clearance underneath uh, to the wheels. Okay, let's take a look underneath. Kind of for a final look at the results here. And get underneath it here. So there is, it's between two and three inches of additional clearance. I could actually put a <clears throat> more negative offset on this wheel. Well, actually positive. So this has five and a half inches of back spacing. And so I could go more back spacing and move that wheel inward more or even run a wider wheel. And here's the outside. It's probably at the limits of the outside, you know, as far as movement goes and stuff, but I don't have any issues with it rubbing out here. These are 20 by 10s with a five and a half inch back space. And then here's the driver's side. There you go, there's better light. Plenty on the inside now. So as that axle travels up and down, it kind of teeters around the differential and it'll tip up an inboard um, on both sides. So that's what this extra space is for. And same story on the outside here. It's like probably at the limits. There's a good maybe three quarters of an inch or so on the outside. And then that's the look of the wheel. So yeah, hopefully this provided some help for you. And if it did, please subscribe. We'll get some more content like this and you can uh, do some more stuff yourself. Hopefully uh, <clears throat> save yourself some money and get a little bit of sense of accomplishment on this. This definitely was a, a big job and I consider myself uh, pretty capable and patient and this just took quite a long time. I wasn't expecting it so if that's any hint to you about the amount of work involved and the uh, video length here is probably gonna point that direction too so uh, fabricator beware that's uh, kind of what it'll be for you so anyway hope you enjoyed it catch you next time on overtime garage